So hello everybody. So welcome to this October reading. It's a bit more spooky light today because um, we, we have a very cloudy, rainy day. But I've got all the candles on and it feels really cosy. And you're so welcome to this reading. My name is Angela. I am an intuitive teacher. I'm going to have a look at the messages that are coming through. I'm going to do the first section on camera and then I'll move the camera down and you can see the cards as I pull them out. And I've got a little bit of music playing on in the background just to create a little bit of ambience and I want this reading to be relaxing. I think when we are relaxed, we're more receptive to things in our life, whether it be guidance, downloads, intuitive hits. Um, I actually recorded a reading yesterday. This has happened to me all week this week as we're on the tail end of the Mercury retrograde. I actually recorded a reading and I wasn't really happy with it. I tend to be a bit fidgety. I think I've got slightly a little bit of attention deficit disorder and I'm not diagnosed, but I think I've always had it. I'm very fidgety and I think that must be quite off-putting on camera. So I um, I played it back and I thought, mm, I'm a bit irritated by this, but look, I'm just being really honest and transparent, guys. That's the way I like to be. And I'm also learning as well what works, trying things on, um, practice runs are great and I am going to share the messages that I got because this has been happening as well with clients where I've recorded and I've had to record again and it's shown me two things it's shown me the speed it's not even speed because with healing there is no time this is what I'm really learning with the spirit world they always say there's no time up there it's like we're living alternative lives all at once it's why we can tap into them when we do past life regression anyway that's a subject for another day but there was something about yesterday that really showed me how how quickly healing can occur when we actually are energetic self matches up with the energy of what healing is asking us to meet to get there and this actually happened for me yesterday so I work in the background, I've got healing modalities and I've got people that I like to work with with my own energy healing and I feel the key to health that a lot of people might be missing, not everybody, it depends on your personal circumstances and I also realised yesterday how important it is that no one size fits all and it's really dangerous, you can go down that rabbit hole of trying to match up your issues and your symptoms and thinking that's me. But over the years, after reading people, like reading their energy, I can honestly say I've never met two people the same out of thousands of people. So this having to redo stuff, it's not like perfectionism or anything like that. It's just shown me um, how fast the energy is moving and how much we can tap into that and we can work with that. And yesterday I was doing a healing session with my lady that I go to and I only see her once a month because my system catches up she'll tune into my body and ask when's the next session and it's this is why I know she works with she's so authentic because some of the things that happened yesterday were about you know I'm just sharing this because it might help somebody it might open up it's, you might go oh I want to try something different um, and I listen to my own in intuition, I have to, it's walking the talk, talking the walk. And also it's about making sure that your energy is in good tip top condition and that does require work and maintenance and investment and time and energy. And there was a lot of work that we're doing that was bringing everything together. And it was really funny, some of the things like she's so tapped in and which is great for me because I can see what she does is what I do with my clients but it's so great to be on the receiving end of that healing where I can just I can work with that person but it's because I really trust her and I feel very safe with her and it's so vital for healing to occur again it's all that receptivity and I think there's a real receptive energy this month around October so this is why I'm sharing this message with you because as intuitives, we're living a lot of the messages that we're guided to give. And so 
we're often guided to share physical experiences and I will often share them with my clients sometimes they'll only share what's going on in the background for them if I think it's applicable to help them with their own unfoldment not because I want them to worry or I want them to take on board the stuff that's going on around I don't want that but there is an element of empowerment that if they know the energy and the power what's going on around say like their session it's like all the jigsaw puzzle pieces going together so um yeah there was a there was a reason why I didn't put the video out because I was like you know yesterday was a good day to do it and record and, and I'm going to do a lot of recording today I'm going to do some astrological readings as well I'm going to put those back on but not on Facebook I'm going to do them on YouTube and put a bit more work on YouTube now and kind of build my channel it's only in the starting blocks um so there was something about learning that gosh in a day there is such a shift that can occur when we're ready for it and when we are willing to see and to take off the masks and actually honor what it is that we need um and there was just a massive message around receptivity and that's regardless of whether you're masculine or feminine predominantly um so let's get to the messages um, what I was receiving yesterday. There's something else I need to say, but it's in the background. It's going to come out. Sorry, guys. It's just there's something I know I need to say, but I've forgotten it. But spirit will bring it back. So one of the messages that was coming through yesterday was this release of um, real clearing energy and how how quick healing can occur when the conditions are right to so the environment our environment ourselves our ability to be open to whatever it is to trust to let go to work with the right person often our healing is it's much more powerful when it's supported and we're not doing it alone and yeah that was the other message is i think it's about what I experienced yesterday was showing me in a matter of hours or a day how quickly things can shift and I think it's important that we know this because that's available to everybody and there was this strong message coming through about we're in Libra season now Libra is the justice card in the tarot it's also about balancing the scales whether it be of justice of karma it rules the seventh house of marriage and partnerships. And I got this very strong message around karmic connections dissolving now. So where maybe people are overstaying their welcome, there is a tower moment coming. So there is a there is a big, we are entering more into the purging and cleansing time in Scorpio, but I feel it's already started for some people. It will start to begin this month in October. Now, Scorpio sun season starts from the 21st, 22nd of October till the same date the next month in November. But we're also going into the eclipse season. So we have a, a we actually have a beautiful full, full moon in Aries on Monday the 9th of October. And then two weeks after that, we'll have the full, uh, the new moon in Scorpio, but it's an eclipse. So we'll have a new moon in Scorpio and then we'll have two weeks after that going into the start of November, we're going to have um, a full moon in Taurus. And they, so the eclipse season is happening in Scorpio and Taurus signs. So wherever you have these placements in your chart, eclipses are wake up moments, but they also bring in great change. They bring in powerful change. Sometimes we change we weren't expecting. So it can bring in shocks and surprises. And I'm being reminded that Uranus, the spiritual awakener, is in this long cycle in Taurus. Now, Taurus is it's the second house of what we own. It can be linked to our finances, what we value. It's not always about money, but Taurus does rule the physical management of money. So our like our currency structure. So this is going to be interesting what's going to happen around this. Um it's what we value within ourselves, so it's our self-esteem. So there's areas where maybe we might be being woken up, say, in the element of 
the subject of I am not staying in this relationship any longer because I'm losing my own self-respect. This is not right for me. But I feel some of these karmic partnerships are coming to a close because I don't know how to word this any better, but I feel like some people are staying. And when we stay in a partnership and a relationship that's come to its natural end, or there is an incompatibility um, where we're not meant to be there, it's not part of our soul growth, soul, soul growth or soul contract that's kind of come to an end. And we've said we're gonna do something else, maybe in our soul plan it's been woken up you'll actually find that it hurts to stay. You will actually find that sometimes the person will continue to hurt us because we're not listening. We're not listening to our guidance. And I know that might sound a bit like, oh, well, it's because this person isn't being, that's when we get stuck into stories. But actually, if we tune in and we really listen, we really, really listen, we will know the answer, we'll know. So there's a lot of this occurring at the moment. Um, so that it's like the scales are being rebalanced in areas of our lives. So wherever Libra is, I mean, it could be you've got Libra and planets under Libra in your 11th house of friendships. So maybe you're just stepping back from certain friendships at the moment and that's fine. It's just that people need to go off and do what they need to do and you've got to focus on other things right now. Right, I'm just going to finish my coffee, which wasn't very nice, to be honest. It was a bit bitter. I've got much nicer organic coffee at home. It's a lesson there to just not... Sometimes I don't need to go out and buy coffee um, and realise how bitter it is. I think the coffee's bitter when they mill them and, they, and it sits there and it's not freshly milled, but look, I'm not a barista. Maybe the baristas out there can tell us why the coffee, maybe it's just the coffee beans. I don't know. Right. So that was one of the messages. The other message that I was getting, that was what I forgot, thank you spirit, was the unveiling so there's almost like if you're wanting to get to the heart of a matter for your healing you're gonna get to the core wound this month there's an opportunity there's like something around the energies that's what happened for me yesterday there was like so that for instance people that I've worked with this person I'm working with at the moment because it will change depending on you know your your development and your progression and your expansion and your health was um, I asked about a certain area and this person was able to tap in and it was about something else but she actually said I can see how this has occurred and she put we put the jigsaw puzzle pieces together in the healing journey and it was really powerful and I, I am fascinated by some of these modalities I'm fascinated with how much power we have to heal and you know there's so many different ways everybody will have their own thing whether it's reiki whether it's qigong whether it's acupuncture i mean i've used acupuncture in the past and i found that super powerful naturopathy um you know herbs um you know functional integrative medicine nutrition um this just you know med beds infrared sauna those of you that know me i've got an infrared sauna I, I find it amazing there's so many different things we can use for the healing of our you know letting go of any energies that are lingering from our past that are holding us back there's so many different ways guys so i think there's a real strong message around this opportunity coming in over the next few weeks i'm hearing to really get to the crux of the matter of a core wound that might have been we've been finding like we're literally peeling off layers of the, of the onion but we're still not getting to the crux the heart of the matter and there's it's there's an unfolding of that so i don't know whether like yesterday I was wearing white there was a lot of white light coming i mean you can see through the windows i get so much light in here i have a lot of light in my home um i'm sure you do as well 
but there's a massive amount of white light healing around this as well. So let's get to the cards, guys. So I'm just going to put the camera down and I'm going to just hopefully you can see this. Yeah, there we go. So let's move those out of the way. Get organised. Beautiful, right. So I'm going to use some of my Kuan Ying or a Soma and Lazu. I love this. Um, right, so I'm just going to ask Spirit to throw the cards out. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do all the cards together. I don't can... So this um, material I've got, it's real silk. And I've used it for years as my reading table because it's my favourite colour. But on camera, there's nothing I can do. I'm like, I always get obsessed about the creases. Sorry, guys, bit of bit of my, um, you know, desire to have it nice. But it's such a healing cover um, colour. There's a big, big healing link here with color as well so you know look at the colors that you're wearing because that's telling you a lot of what's going on inside so messages for october please spirit what have you got to tell us um coming up so my guys are just saying just don't forget about those placements so we've got aries on, on monday and then we've got scorpio and then taurus so this is Libra time so the second house which is ruled by Taurus is coming up because I feel some of this is obviously beforehand sensing so this is to do with financial but it's actually to do with physical currency changes in physical currency sensing something that's coming yeah change so there's going to be more fluctuations in so this is more um I think this is going to be a hodgepodge of different messages um I think this is a collective message. Right, let's just keep going before I start tuning in. <laughs> it's just telling me, Angela, focus, focus. Okay, it's always been a bit of a challenge for me. Some of the cards that came out yesterday are coming out again. But again, I feel like these are in more detail today. How interesting is that? Anything else? They're just saying, we'll go back to these. Um, dum, 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 right, I want the healing the energy healing cards i love these by sandra and taylor these cards are by susan shepherd i use these cards a lot and they are the black moon astrology they're absolutely beautiful i've had some of my friends buy these when they've come to my house and they've seen them like and these cards are gorgeous and they they're really really accurate um but they're very very detailed the amount of work that she's put into the booklet and the cards and what she does is she indicates on the card what the correlation card in tarot is. So if you're used to doing tarot, I think that's really helpful. And they're numbered and they're numbered in order in the book. So absolutely love these cards. So this is for October for all of us listening, please, Spirit. Messages from you. Thank you. Community. Right, okay. <clears throat> right, okay. Okay. We don't read these cards upside down. Well, I don't anyway. Yep. Okay. That's so funny. These cards came out yesterday as well. I love this one. I mean, they always bring out the messages if they need to come out. So that's why you should never ever worry about, you know. Okay, right. I know what that's about. Don't worry if you can't see the cards in the, in the camera, guys. I'll pull them up to the camera as I... Yeah, there's quite a lot of messages here about money as well. Money, people worrying about that. That came out yesterday as well. Um, yeah, it's going to open up spirit here with us on this journey, though, guys. We're not alone. And it's interesting because Capricorn, this Pluto in Capricorn cycle that we're in is dismantling all the um it's dismantling all the structures and one of those is we're seeing where governmental structures um wealth structures actually financial structures are um really going to go through a big dismantling and then um rebuild 
um, rebuild process it's interesting because as I'm getting this I'm hearing that the thing that they want to rebuild is just not going to work because other people are just going to crack on and do what they need to do you know you don't have to be part of the narrative guys you don't have to do what you're fed right okay this is so interesting this is another message right <laughs> this came out yesterday you know honestly like this is how powerful spirit are they're just saying to me you know this they, they actually brought out the thinking man and archangel Michael which is but I don't feel like this is it. It's just like he's saying hello and he's saying yes. He's saying an, he's saying like an acknowledgement to yesterday, but he's also saying that um, these are, this is a message around people who are stuck in their head about something. But that'll come out when I talk about that message, right? Okay. And again, please, guys, try to... Um, not try to, but just trust what you're getting as well. Because I see one side of the crystal ball and you see the other side. And they're all right. They're all correct. What's this about? Okay. Right, okay. And what's that about? Bus, please. Clarification on that. Okay, right. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Right. Ooh, la, la. That's a powerful one around love. That's for only for specific people, though. Right. Is that everything? And then I'll see what I get. Right. So I've got a big chunky jumper on here today so let's try and not hoof the cards out on the table <laughs> says the Taurus with the second house and owning right so second house and owning water element and sensing and change okay so I need to be careful how I word this for obvious reasons right so there is a change around um this so what we pay for stuff with um fluctuations uh what the message I'm getting to share with you is just don't have things, don't have your eggs in one basket. I'm going to have to be a little bit um, conceptual about how I articulate this. Um, you know, it's like the time to pay off debts, um, to not rely on old types of structures for returns because um, everything's going to get slightly wobbly. And what I feel around this is, can you see on the picture, I am sure, okay, so there's different types of currencies, but you see, when I look at this, I see I see the, uh, a well-known um, superpower country, and it's not the UK, but the UK recent events, which if you actually look at the news that happened were a distraction, um, were a distraction and there's an unbalancing occurring that's going to continue because we're going through this Pluto and Capricorn cycle and it's going to continue till 2023-2024 until Pluto moves into Aquarius so everything that's ruled under Capricorn which I'm going to read to you now so this will give you your kind of answers is going through a dismantling and a restructuring process because where Pluto goes it's ruled by Scorpio it, Scorpio used to be ruled by Mars until they discovered Pluto. Pluto is just complete, utter destruction, death, but it gets transformed, so it gets re reborn. So those of you that are in my group will have heard me talk about this Pluto and Capricorn cycle. I did a video on the page about this year, like ages and ages ago, years and years ago. And um, what was interesting, so this is the devil card as well in the tarot so actually the devil card can be a good omen around friendships um sorry friendships i'm looking at the friendship card uh, around marriage but it's also addictions as well so um you know i just we've got the balance card so i would take that that's the time the time that we're in at the moment libra we've got yeah god i didn't even put two and two together honestly guys sometimes i am that bit <laughs> somewhere else one foot here and one foot on the other side is Pluto so we've actually got the Pluto cards come out thank you spirit for really spelling it out and then we've got 11th house and friends but also the 11th house rules hopes dreams and wishes it's what we're hoping for the long term so this is connections as well um I'm just going to ask them about that because that's why the astrology cards they kept said saying that is this just about friendship yeah okay I feel like there is going to be people are going to be 
going off on their own little events because they've got the void of course moon missing card and we've got the ninth house of face it's like a little bit like people are going off now to learn to go through their own almost like philosophical path maybe in an internal journey to heal what it is that they need to look at so if you have friends and they kind of have gone a bit AWOL, um, you know, sometimes it's nice to reach out, but we can't always be the person initiating the contact. It's got to be two ways. And, you know, I understand, even myself, I've had periods where, you know, we have to go into the cave and we have to heal, especially if you are a healer or you're a person that's giving out that healing energy or you're channeling it. There are times where you need to go in and recalibrate yourself and build up your energy again. And you can't have people contacting you and constantly requesting and asking for things. This is a receptive type of yin energy that we are in, in this Libra time. So it could be that, you know, don't take it personal if people have gone a bit AWOL on you. Um, they're going through their own transformational journey. But I also think that that doesn't mean that we have to go totally like disappear. We can actually, with the right people that are meant to be in our lives, we can send a little message and just say, hi, I'm fine. I'm just, you don't, I'm not explaining, so I'll just say, hi, how are you? Um, but also there, there is going to be a, a clearing around this as well. So friendship groups as well. Some people are going to be removed. Um you know not in not in vibrational match and that's fine it's just time to move on it's a transformational cycle it's a rebalancing of everything um so capricorn i was going to go through these capricorn energies so i was just clarifying there was it just about friends but the message of clarification is that people are going off now on their own philosophical journey because the ninth house reveal it rules foreign people and foreign lands but it's also about um you know higher learning and it's also about it rules publishing so people might be going off now to do their work to do their what they've come here to do um and also it could be that we are connecting with people who are going to be supportive of that journey and those that aren't are going to be removed it's just the cycle of life i'm hearing um so this card rules um ambition goals the outdoors mountainous areas heights cliffs skyscrapers publicity fame and infamy the father or person who plays a fatherly role so this is also authority figures um judges how others view you power using force meeting people in power the boss bureaucrats management prudence stubbornness staying the course determination the payoff willpower staying strong um it's old world traditions it's world map work and not being given any slack karma funnily enough that's come out with this fatalism tough luck dwelling on the past looking back not forward using what you have pine trees dry wit teachers and teaching God, i didn't know it ruled that toothache rheumatism another aches and pains loyalty and commitment in marriage ambition playing the rules moving up in the world fame infinite and the bones because capricorn is ruled by saturn which is always cycle of times. Um, and the reason it rules mountainous areas is, it, it's, is its animal is the mountain goats, which are amazing. You ever see them? They just climb the steep, steepest cliffs and you wonder how the heck did you get up there? Um, And it's, it's an earth sign. So what I would say is around those areas, there's lots of transformation happening. So it could be healing areas around authority. Now we don't get the healing card, but I wouldn't be surprised that there's going to be certain areas around like this energy of Capricorn, that this is where we're sensing the change. And I would be, I just feel like what the spirit is saying is watch out around this Taurus full moon which let me just check no i'm not going to check i'm going to do that in the facebook group you can look that up taurus full moon there's going to be a this with something coming around a currency and monetary structures um it's not time to, for major investments un, unless like you know like if you've got your forever home and you know this is something that is just going to be worth the investment for you great um, but I actually feel with this 
you just I would just be very careful at the moment. I just wouldn't have the message I just keep getting is don't put your eggs in one basket. You know, minimise your risk. Don't have you know what sat in one place. That's what I would say about that. Right. I'm going to move these cards away now and I'm going to focus now on the energy healing cards because I love these and I feel like there's a massive message around this. Um, messages coming through. So here we've got community, seventh chakra and sixth chakra. So as there is a development in you, there is going to be a change in what you're seeing. Um, I feel there's going to be a lot of alternative communities coming up this month. There's going to be an understanding that a lot of a lot of the communities that are um, really, really focused on this like unity consciousness. So we've got Uriel and Metatron here. And Metatron for me is a really, really, really strong archangel. Like he just has no messing. And then Uriel, it's interesting that she's got Uriel as a woman because I always see him as a man. But I see Archangel Gabriel, you see, as... Yes, I see her as a woman, not a man, but a lot of people see her, him as, a, you know, the angels just appear as they need to. Um, Uriel, for me, brings in legal issues and also um, irons them out. So I wouldn't be surprised that we're going to start to see more and more and more in the world where there's been untruths proliferate, I can't say that word, proliferated, and a Metatron for me always really just cuts through the crap. Uh, really, really powerful to work with. Um, he also protects children, children who are very, very uh, sensitive, highly creative. He works with them. Um, so I would watch out there in the community, wherever you are, where there is a, we're seeing the scales of justice being balanced here again. Um, I just feel like there's information coming out. It's like in this picture, she's holding a book. There's information to come out that we're going to see. Specifics, I can't tell you because it's going to be all around the world. But what I will say is like the narrative about a lot of what we're being shared and what the truth is are just two totally different worlds. And I think what you're going to start to say, right, this is what a lot of this message is about, the angels are saying, is that what we're going to start to see is a lot of people really starting to, the pennies dropping. And what that's doing is it's waking up a lot of like, oh my God, like anger. And like, I cannot believe that I like, I think what it is, is people are waking up to a lot of brain, um, psychological um, washing and, um, and it, what it's going to do is it's going to get them wise to actually because the truth you'll always know in the truth if you've if you've worked if you really tapped in with yourself and you know yourself you actually know like if you put on the news or you watch something you know when you're being lied to you know when something doesn't feel right you just know um and actually what we're seeing in our world is it's a crushing of critical thinking we've seen that in the science world where it's almost like look down upon to critically think and question and you see the angels people think the angels it's all softness and light but actually when you really get on this journey it's oh my god like it's all about the truth and and also we don't have to deliver the truth to people's doors in a really harsh way and if we are within our own sovereignty we shouldn't have to feel the need to fight to wake people up that's actually none of our business and what we're doing is we're taking on board the responsibility for other people's journey and that's actually not our place so actually the further you get along in your life and you're on this spiritual path you realize that it's not that you there's a period where you wake up to a lot of the injustices and you wake up to a lot of the things in life that don't add up but then you start to integrate the information and then you start to really, really live your life because you realise that you can't put your life on hold and you also can't live because you don't fit that narrative. And actually you'll find that if you're actually, if you look at your life, that you've probably never fitted a narrative because you don't believe in putting people in boxes. So the community here is like the world community is waking up to a lot. Seven is spiritual it's spiritual learnings. Uh, number nine 
is the spiritual teacher but the seven is very much like it's the hermit card i'm sure it is in the tarot could be wrong here let me just check i like my information to be correct if it's not i take that back um i don't know i don't have a number on here anyway maybe some of you can tell me about that um but i do know that it's like going in and doing your spiritual, the assimilation of spiritual knowledge. And people might go, oh, why is this happening, whatever. But that's all part of the spiritual journey is to integrate the information, is to understand why we came down here to do what we've come to do. And that might mean, you know, cert we all have certain areas and subjects that are close to our hearts. We can't save everything and everyone. But there are specific topics and areas where you will be called now to look at. So there's something here, awakening, because the third eye is here. So this is spiritual truth, it's clairvoyance, it's seeing the truth. It's a blue card here. Metatron does not mask anything. He's very, very, very powerful. If you want to work with an archangel who is motivating you to just crack on and do what you need to do, he is the one. Um and you know for me i'm also hearing that he holds steady regardless of all these flip fluctuations that we're going through and also uriel is really good to work with if you're working with any legal matters he brings the outcome that's best for everybody involved um i'm going to leave it there with those cards otherwise i feel i could go on a big message journey with them right so let's crack on now with the rest of the cards so I'm going to get this one done because it's about relationships. So what I feel is that, you know, this is just telling me caring connections, door to personal happiness and angel of love. So um, I feel like this is the message before about the karmic connection. So there's a dishonesty around staying. It's like I'm being dishonest to myself and the other person. It's out of attachment. It's like I don't want to leave because it's easier to stay but I feel like if you're honest with yourself and this obviously is not for everybody guys but there's an element here of like saying well you know um what was it something my lady said to me yesterday um there's something like um not having self acceptance is self-deceit not having self-acceptance is self-deceit and I thought it was really powerful and what that meant was and this you know it will mean what it means for you what I took with that was that by not being loving and kind and seeing me like spirit see me or you which is that, you know, not accepting oneself. If you accept yourself, you know what it is, where you're at, what you need, what you're offering. You can, self-acceptance is, is knowing the truth and the heart of the matter. And I feel like maybe there could be, for some people, an element of realising that this is an unhealthy attachment because the deceit card's there. If it was a I'm not saying that attachments are healthy or not, but I'm just saying that there's an opportunity here to look, you have to look in the mirror and be honest, because that's what the magician and the, and the mirror is, is actually the answer to heart healing here is, is to actually, is to look at yourself and just say, look, okay, I need to get, I need to get honest, I need to get honest about stuff. It's like if you go for healing, you know, if you work with somebody, and this could be like with your osteopath or your chiropractor, whoever it is, it doesn't have to be non-allopathic or holistic, it could, whatever it is you're wanting to look at. If you can't be honest about what's happened, it's like if I go to a healer and I don't tell them what's really going on, they can't get to the heart of the matter. So I feel like this, this is a dual message as well for those of you wanting to look at core wounds in your relationship patterns you don't have to be in a relationship for this to apply it's like the secret to unlocking your heart is like well look maybe that you somebody really really did a number on you in the past and actually 
it's time to look at that and go, do you know what? This really hurt me and I want to release it because this, so like this hurt, this pain that say you went through is actually, it's armored your heart and it's protected. It's a form of self protection. So actually you're doing what you're supposed to do to look after yourself, but actually it's gone too far to extremes and it's blocking your daughter personal happiness and that can mean like you know just because we had a narcissistic mother or father or ex-partner it doesn't mean that we're doomed for failure in love it doesn't mean that we're doomed for failure in friendships maybe our best friend did a number on us and absolutely because this is to do with deceits this is where we've been betrayed and it's where and i want to say something to people as well that have gone through this narcissistic journey i'm going to do a video on this soon it's just not been the right time and um you know i've studied this subject area for a very long time in my own life because i love psychology and there's some amazing people out there doing some fabulous work very compassion focused as well and something that I've noticed with the narcissistic journey, like there's different ways of looking at it. There's the archetypal journey. There's the, you know, there's the um, the past parental wounding, there whatever it is, but it is endemic of our time. And I, I now this is just me talking now. I believe that a lot of the time, the person that was in a relationship with a narcissist whether it's a partner or a, a love partner or a friendship or somebody that you've worked with whatever it is you want to heal you want to try and fix it you your resolution might be based upon this belief well we have to be okay with each other but then there's an what i've seen is the narcissist doesn't want that because by not healing the connection and providing the other person with closure or resolution, that still is an element of power and control to them. And actually, when you realize this, you can actually say to yourself, you can let yourself off the hook because it's not about forgiving yourself. I mean, that's part of the journey because you say, look, I didn't see it and I didn't know and I'm learning, we're all learning, but actually, there is also an element, because I've seen even, a, I saw somebody do a video on this the other week and it was like, you need to do this and you need to do that. And I just thought there's so much responsibility placed on the other person and not the narcissist. And actually I've learned this by being around these people is that there's a reason why they ghost, it's a reason why they don't resolve and it's because they are, they still, a siphoning energy by doing that because when you close the door with a resolution everybody gets a healing we move on so what you do is you give yourself the healing you are not your life and being heart-centered and connected and opening yourself to receiving love and support of the healthy types of relationships that you really want in your life it's not dependent on healing and closing the door with a narcissist it's actually you closing the door on that event yourself. And that's what taking back your true power is all about, okay? I'm gonna leave that message there because I feel like that message is for some people as well. And then we're gonna go back to something quite collective because I feel like this is monetary now. So, being hijacked by what we are reading and seeing, there's a rest and rejuvenation card here. So, you know, please give yourself like permission to really step back from what's going on out there. It's not about putting blinkers on and being in denial, but the outcome card is a woman holding a coin. So I feel like the answer here is with the goddess. We've got the goddess of the moon, trusting your own intuition, working with spirit on this, because every, I, you know I can't cover everybody's a whole collective situation because I think this is gonna play out for people differently. Um, now I don't know about you, but I feel like the social support systems are in place to help people that are vulnerable. But I feel like that's been hijacked by this wokeism of like, you know, I just think like the nanny state in the UK, they try to help everybody. And actually, as we saw in the pandemic, a lot of people availed of help when they, if they were actually really honest about it, they didn't need the money. 
And I think that what's happening here as well is so there's patience and anxiety and all tied up. So there is an element here of, I want to say, spirit are advising us to try and step back from these stories that we're being told because it's actually what it's doing is it's creating a lot of anxiety and it's moving us away from our own spiritual. Um, they're even saying to me to not show you these cards because there's no use. I just talk about them. Um, the key is actually to go within and it's amazing what we can work with when we have less and and i think um what is going to be the answer do you know like i showed you that community card before with the sixth chakra and the seventh chakra so it's downloads from spirit and it's trusting what we're seeing in our third eye not what we're seeing out there is it's actually our local communities that are going to get us through it's our local communities are going to pull together and we're going to help each other um and it's the divine feminine so it's and we all have it all of us men women even if you don't relate to gender you we all have the divine feminine energy which is about nurturing and loving and being kind and helping each other and sharing what we've got and actually what we have is we have a lot more in there than what we realize but a lot of this is pulling away from these really quite insipidous like toxic um things that were being told well well and this happened this has been going on for the last few years and what spirit is saying is that those that of you that just really trusted your intuition on this you've really strengthened these new muscles that you've got like you, you actually built new muscles it's like it prepared you for this time so you know now that you know you'll fight for injustice and things like that but not at the expense of your own sanity we can't fight every you know journey this it's time now for other people to step up and wake up to this as well and i feel that there's going to be a lot of learning around what we value how we earn what we earn uh, what we use whether it be mother earth and her resources because there is a massive link to this um and we are going to see, and we're already seeing it here in the UK, a massive disparity between the, um, you know, I'm not saying people that have, you know, worked and they've built their businesses and they're successful, but we're going to really see a big gap in wealth and who has what and how that's distributed. And it's actually like our systems here are doing it in plain sight. But actually what they're doing is they're just outing themselves and i think what they're not plan what they've not planned for is the actual the power of altruism in the community and unity is actually going to overtake all these nonsense things that they're going to counteract and we need to remember that and we need to harness our energy and we need to direct it and if there's anything that i've learned this year is spirit keeps saying to me follow your bliss and that will be different things for different people. But this following your bliss is the secret to your success. Because I'll tell you what, what it does is you're going to tap into the alchemy that a lot of these energies that are trying to restrict resources and what we have and what we do. And I'm not going to get into this in here, but obviously I have to word this appropriately. Is that, you know, a lot of spiritual teachers don't want to talk about this. But what they're doing is they're missing the point because everything is everything is of spirit so all these situations are designed to wake people up as well so there's like almost like a false awakening and then there's the real awakening and the real awakening is not just picking and choosing what you want um so the false awakening is picking and choosing the things that are only like easy to control and it's a lot of spiritual bypassing it's also linked and i'm just saying this for a reason it's also linked to an outside agency of you that's going to come and rescue you that's false awakening real awakening is actually seeing that there is an a, a divine um there's a divine unfoldment to what's going on down here and actually you have so much more power of how you can navigate this um and we're all being connected the communities we're actually all being connected to the right energies of people and some of us we don't even know each other what spirit's saying they're actually connecting us all together in with our feminine receptive part and it's and it's through this it's through the power of 
Um, it's, I'm even hearing telepathy. Uh, yeah, six chakra. So this third eye energy, like we, we all know each other energetically and we're working together, even though we've not even met, met each other. That's how the communities are linking up. And you see, you can't hijack that. You Well, you can try and produce interference, um, but this is why spirit is saying to us to get off a lot of our devices because it's interfering with our energy systems. Um, then actually to tune up using a lot of these modalities. So you'll hear things about med beds, using light, light systems. So like the infrared sauna is one of them. Um, working with light, working with white light. If you look at the lights I've got here, working with light, working with color. There's so many powerful modalities that we've not even tapped into. And they're, they're mentioning, they're bringing through Tesla here as well. Tesla was really on, onto this with electricity people are going to start to look at natural sources of power for themselves harnessing solar in a new way he they're saying to me he had some kind of way of harnessing energy for free and they knew this and i think people are going to start tapping into this and they're going to start sharing this knowledge yeah it's going to bring in a lot of balance for all of us so again, you see, these are spiritual truths, guys. These are things that we're not seeing, but we're seeing with our third eyes. So again, don't let, don't let anyone and anything hijack you. There's so much available to us from the other side. Yeah, you see, the ones that this card came out yesterday. Can you see she's blocking the entrance? This card for me says, I'm blocking the, the entrance to wealth. Look at me, I hold all the coins, but look how... Like for me, there's no color in this card around this. I think it's obviously a woman. It's, you know, she's dressed in very gray, dark clothing. It's not vibrant. It's not joyful. It's like, no, you can't come in. Your name's not on the list, mate. Well, do you know what? I don't want to come in there. I've got, I've got my own. I've got my own temple. I've got stuff money can't buy. And I know when I need, I know what I need. Um, I'll get what I need because I'm tapped in. I'm tapped in, tuned in. And, I, you know, these messages about um, the whole thing around the you know what. So I don't want to say certain words unless they get flagged up. But around certain structures, I've been getting this for months. Um, yeah, the thinking woman. Like a lot of you, you tap in and tune in. It will come through your mental faculties as well, guys. Honestly, if you just knew how powerful you were, you'd be like, let's go. Yeah, angel of strength. So we've got like, again, I think this is going to wake up a lot of people's spiritual gifts that they're not using what's going on in our world it's going to force us to go within and ask questions and look at stuff so again i'm very hopeful guys i'm the glass half full girl healer of the ages this is jesus he's coming in to say look we got this um i mean look what the christ consciousness journey was about he went through everything that he said i mean he got crucified for what he did he got crucified and like, look, as you all know, I'm not religious, but I love the journey of Christ consciousness. It was why I chose to grow up in a Catholic family because all those, you know, everything that I got taught through the scriptures and through um, the theological truths, I took with me, but all the BS are left behind. Um, yeah, okay, the Spirit just talking to me about something else there, but... I mean, look at it. It's like, look at that. You see solar plexus energy. Look at the yellow. It's throughout his middle region on here. And the solar plexus is, is power. It's choice. It's taking action um, from a place of love. Number six. Right, guys. I think I'm going to leave it there. I'm nearly up to 55 minutes. Come on, we'll have one more the same, right? Let's have another card. Let's, what's... um. It's October, anything in the Baroque Tarot? October, anything else you want to tell us? Justice, oh my God. Queen of Swords, cut through the crap. And also it's like mental, it's mental clarity, the Queen of Swords when it's there upright. But the Justice card, this is the card of Libra. It's the balance of the scales where things were out of sync they're going to come back into sync but there is an adjustment phase and we need to this is why again spirit are coming into tapping into their knowledge and truth and showing you it's there it's available to all of us just like it's available to me it's available to you and what they're saying is that 
we have to also acknowledge that all this, you know, all of these old archaic structures might be collapsing for the rest of our lives, but that doesn't mean it has to take our joy away. What we do is the spiritual path is learning to navigate these times but also to fly high and free at the same time. And I think that's the message that I wanna I wanna leave for us last. I don't know, it's just like me and my brain now. I wanna see what the hermit card is in here, because that for me, and if I've got it wrong, I'll admit. Um, but it's always um, the hermit card for me. No, the hermit card is, yeah, it's Virgo, which for me is going into the, spiritual okay to learn something it's, to, it's going within um let me have a look it's probably going to be like the last card in the deck i did this the other day i had to go through the cards like two or three times but when i did i still didn't get the card that i wanted sometimes i've got the attention span of a gnat right okay let's go they're so funny they're saying stop being critical angel that's not good you know what you're absolutely right spirit there is no there's no justice in being unkind to oneself, is there? Justification, I should say. See, I'm telling you, I can't even, I can't even see. It's not even here. Yeah, there we are, the hermit. Right, so it's the card of nine, right, okay. So the card of nine, I don't know where we got that, but there we go, that's the... But for some reason, I was getting that around the number seven. I don't know why. Let me just see what this is in the Black Moon Astrology cards, the number seven. <clears throat> well, Saturn, truth is six. Jupiter in abundance. The wheel of fortune. Gosh, that's so interesting. So in this, in her deck, she's got the number seven card as expansion in Jupiter. Oh, right, okay. I know why they're saying this, because the Jupiter card came out yesterday, but I got the card of blessings. So where Jupiter goes, it makes things bigger. Um, and it gives you the strength to go on. Well, that's interesting to talk about the Catholic Church. It's um, It rules that in this deck. Religion, spiritual ideas. So that's probably what I was picking up. I don't know. Anyway, it's all learning, isn't it, guys? It's all, it's all about learning to trust and listen to the messages. Right, so I'm going to leave it there. I'm wishing you wonderful rest of October. So these messages are messages are apparent for October um, or for the next few weeks and um, hope you enjoy hope you got something out of it and I will be back very soon for another reading all my love take good care of yourselves